our neighbor through the woods, she fell. Oh no. Yeah, she fell bad. She's in bad shape. I mean, she's oh, no. she's gonna be okay, but she's gonna be in bed for some days, hurting. So anyway, she fell, and um, space brings her to the ER, and then I um, I was actually ministering to uh, Ernesto and Trin last night till 10:45 at night. So I didn't leave work until 10:45 at night, and uh, had to come home. Well, actually, no, I had to go to Vicky's house, get her phone, and then drive to the hospital. Because she forgot to grab it. Is she at her blindness right now? No, she's home. Yeah, okay. I got a call again in the middle of the night after I slept for an hour. They're ready for you. <laughs> They're ready for you. Come get me. So anyway, um, but while we're in there, there's this other lady, and I'm not going to give her name, um, a young lady who we recognize from another local church. We happened to go to like a dinner, um, Thanksgiving dinner or something. Yeah, it was a Thanksgiving dinner at um, ACC Athens uh, Community Church down there by Muffler Man. And, um, and a couple years ago we met this young lady. And well, she is on a hospital bed with a nurse sitting next to her, like in the ER, right there where we're at. The curtains open and everything. And uh, she was there because she was having suicidal thoughts and actually you know, was on the edge of killing herself. And she called the police and said, um, I need help. And they brought her to the hospital. And um, so, Vicky falls. That's not a good thing. <laughs> There's nothing good about Vicky falling. I mean, she's not in good. She's you don't want Vicky falling. Um, any of us should fall before Vicky falls. And uh, and and Vicky goes. She's laying there and she's hurting. She goes and she knew space was ministering to this young lady. And um, and she can hear everything. And she goes. I always wonder why God lets things like this happen to me. And she's like, I'm already getting one of the answers to how he's being good even in this. And like, it was amazing. We got to actually take that young lady home and because um, uh, she didn't have a way home. It was a beautiful thing. And so a bad thing, yeah. an actual truly bad thing, you yeah. know? It's not that it seemed bad, it's yeah. that it was bad. Not allowed to... To, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and that girl working all things, all all things out for good. For yeah, those who love them and the public according to his purpose. Yeah, and yeah. and what's amazing, we're walking out, and that girl said, "I just, um, my phone broke, and I just lost all my contacts, and I was just thinking about you the other day, space, and I couldn't get a hold of you because I lost your contact." And she goes, "I think God sent you guys to me tonight." And it's like, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. So, anyway, sorry to hijack it, but that story. Yeah. 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 Well, I do think you believe there's a reason for stuff happening, but I really think we should look on the bright side of a tragedy or that or an accident. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. it just seems kind of what's the word? Uh, I don't want to say insensitive. It's not. It's not insensitive. It's just. Well, there's a time and a place, you know, if something... There's bad a happens, time and a place. Something yeah. bad happens to something, you don't want to jump in at the, you know, at the wrong time and say, hey, well, look on the bright side. Yeah, you know, the, Bible, the Bible does say weep with those who weep. And, yeah, right. And, and yeah. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's a time and a place. Well, yeah. You just good, go uh, good wording there, Tom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like this passage we've been reading tonight just because it shows Paul's passion. To share the gospel, you know, this translation says on that last verse, um, you know, it's like with every fiber of his being, he wants to preach to people, he wants mm -hmm. to share and help. He says, So, as much as in me is, mm -hmm. I'm ready to preach the gospel. So, with every part of him, with mm -hmm. everything that's in him, he's mm -hmm. ready to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though he knows when I get there, I need rest. <laughs> we saw that in Romans 15, you know, yeah, and, and, and I like. How he says, you know, that, uh, you know, I'm not asking anything of anyone. I'm doing this because I love the Lord. But if you want to give me a little something, I wouldn't mind. And it's like, <laughs> a, you know, the ox is worthy of his hire, whatever he says there is. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that was in First Corinthians um, 9. But he, it, it is true um, in Romans 15, and we didn't go there. Uh, we did go to Romans 15, but we didn't hit the verse. Um, he is, I'm looking for it. I think I must have read down and I saw something in there. Um, 
He is asking, yeah, yeah, verse 24, whenever I go to Spain, for I hope to see you in passing. And he's, I, I, I'm, I'm, I hope to be helped by on my way there, on my way to Spain. I, I hope, uh, Romans 15, 24, for I hope to see you in passing <clears throat> and to be helped on my way there by you when I have first enjoyed your company for a while. He, is, he, does, want, he does want them to help him, yeah. in, you know, f financially support him going to Spain. There, there's, but, but even that is for the ministry, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't want to go to Spain just to sightsee. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Same thing in First Corinthians nine. It clearly is. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't just want money. I, I need it in mm -hmm. order to free me up yeah. from making it, so that I can yeah. preach the gospel more. Yeah. It's it's those who long to get rich. Yeah. They're they're the ones that in a snare and temptation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but so I mean, in almost every single verse. You know, for I long to see you. Um, you know, oftentimes I purport to come unto you. Mm -hmm. I'm a debtor to everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, so as much as in me is, it's like he's constantly just reiterating his passion to mm -hmm. come and preach the gospel to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love how uh, faith and obedience are in parallel. Mm -hmm. And uh, Romans 8 1. 1692. Um, yeah, because a, a, a lot of people believe that you can have faith and live a life with zero desire to be God, Christ like. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's, yeah, it's like faith. They're synonymous. Mm -hmm. You cannot have faith without obedience. Mm -hmm. Right. If you don't desire to be Christ like, then you're not a Christian. Yeah, because he, I was just watching um, an episode of The Chosen, and he says, he says, you know, all I'm asking is that you, I think it was to uh, Judas, the newest disciple, said, that, you know, that um, all I ask is that you, no, someone else, he was saying, that, all I ask is that you try to be like me. Mm. <clears throat> well, uh, if you want to mind, go go ahead and head out of here. Yeah, man, I don't mind. Yeah, man. Good to have right. you here. Good to have you, come brother. Brother. Uh -huh. You're such a blessing. Good to see y'all again. Yeah. I'm gonna uh, might might see some of y'all at church this Sunday. Awesome. Awesome. See you, see you later. Yeah, love see you see so you. much. Yeah. Have a nice night. Yeah, yeah. watch for deer. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> love that guy. My first time for mine. So cool. He showed up at church, and um, mm -hmm. he's never been. In school. He's never been to church before. Uh, at least our church. I think he hasn't been to church since he was a little kid. He shows up on Sunday. And during the announcement time, he just stands up. Hey, everybody, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, my name's Hunter. I'm friends with the Welches and been going to Bible study. And I'm just, Man, I just, I'm new here. I'm to turn about another shade of purple or something. Yeah, <laughs> I know, it was awesome. He's like, I, I'm new here. I love that. I'm well, not many, not many people be a bond to to the jump to uh, right. Yeah, yeah, I guess. That's not, it's pretty rare. Because <laughs> always yeah. like, when you say I something like you're making me look bad or something. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Anyway, love that guy. Oh, Matthew, what are your thoughts, man? Mr. Quiet, I know your your brain is spinning. Well, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I I like the the faith and faith is paralleled with with obedience. But I I also think regarding faith as well. It's it's really the the root that produces it. Faith is. I I, I like to I like to uh, to imagine things. Mm -hmm. Whenever whenever I, I try to think. Through, especially when, whenever I'm, I'm speaking as well, I try to make it make it fit because it, it's it's all in here and it fits here. I just want to put it out there. So right. as, as much as as faith is equal to obedience, faith is faith is, is just an, an instrument by which God uses to save a man. That faith is always used to, uh, or that that instrument is used to. Uh, is, is used to work on a greater greater purpose. So it, it, stem, it stems from uh, Aristotle. Aristotle thought uh, in, in his, his different philosophies. He, he was like, we have different different causes. Now there's there's a uh, there's he used a, a sculptor. A rock is the material cause, and you go through different things. And then then the hammer and chisel is the instrumental cause. So faith 
in regard to, to whether it be justification or, or I, I would say also sanctification and glorification because you can't have justification and not have sanctification and glorification. Because mm-hmm. otherwise you have nothing to justify. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> The faith is just just the instrument that we are connected to Christ, and that's what he's used. So in in regard to being Christ-like and being obedient, it really stems from faith, uh, arresting and looking onto onto Christ, as as, as you said, or to... uh, uh, what, what, what was the uh, the wording you used? I mean, I, I got bearing his image coming to mind, but being formed into his oh, image. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. To be predestined to be conformed, conformed to the image conformed. of Conformed, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Faith is also, as much as it is used by God to save a man, it's also used to uh, really connect him. To, to, to lay hold of is, is something uh, the Scripture uses. Mm. And I, I think that's, for, for me at least, in my walk, that's mm. really important to... Uh, to really grasp as before for months and months and months I was I was really fixated on on the faith part the the connecting to Christ and not really seeing okay yeah but greater is is he who you're trying to connect to than than just the faith itself mm-hmm. yeah. so mm-hmm. and then going to learn how to be obedient because I I fell personally into the uh, into the the net of just learning theology and then not applying it not using it to further the kingdom, further the gospel. And, so easy. Oh goodness, yes. And now I'm I'm rediscovering because everybody, whenever they become a new Christian, at least that's one of the first things. At least, at least for me, it was learning how to be obedient. I would I would preach. I used to do things on, on Snapchat. I'd post a verse of the day and always be something practical. And um, I, then I, I stopped because I wanted to learn theology. But I'm rediscovering. Um, practicality. I'm realizing now, due to due to theology, like none of this is is worth anything if I don't fixate my whole gaze on my Savior who who bought me with His blood. Mm-hmm. Nothing nothing gets done with without without Him. Mm-hmm. Without without me loving Him, all of them because He loved me first. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's there, that's all we got. I think there, there are people. plenty of people yeah. um, who cognitively have like everything correct Mm -hmm. and just don't have a relationship with God Mm -hmm. and they know the rules of the kingdom they don't know the king so what good is it they're just another lawyer yeah I think um, yeah I mean like I mean there's just so many and yeah it's like yeah that's cool that's cool there's a lot of people who read about theology and read about God's works and Jesus' works, but then they they just don't, like you said, they don't even know who the king is. I mean, they're just, it's like, it's like a, sto- a story to them, you know, like the, it's a fantasy story that they're right, just they got, obsessed with. They got all the background, with. you know, the, the, the prequels, they got all the stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's silly. Yeah. And they're going to Comic-Con, you know, all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say with that being said. Theology is amazing to study. Yeah, you oh should yeah. be studying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's, that's but they come hand in hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and the better the theology, like the, the more glory, the the more truth we you know about God it is, it just brings more glory to God. Yeah. Um, well, think about think about proclaiming love with bad theology. Okay, and you, 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 that's how you get all these churches with the rainbow flags, yeah. and you know, yeah. they're proclaiming I mean, love, love, I mean, love. You're bad at theology, you're just the church of Satan at that point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but, but it's bad theology in the sense of they're saying this is what the Bible says. It's no, it's not. And so, I mean, that, but that's this proclamation of quote unquote love, which we're talking about. Like, wow, man, the, the heart of God's love in Paul's heart, you know. And, and, and so if you, like, that has to be aligned with truth, you yeah. know, because yeah. cause what is love? Well, it spells it out in here, you know, like, like this is the great dictionary for everything. So what is love? Well, the word of God says dot, dot, dot. You know, what is truth? Well, the word of God says dot, dot, dot. And, and, um, and that's why I would always tell my sons, like, like, this is the truth. Like, get it in your head. This is what the Bible teaches about this. 
get it in your head. Okay, now get it in your heart. You know, it's like, it's like, because if it's, if it's not in your heart, then it's not going to be in your hands and your feet. <laughs> you're not going to be out in the world. You're going to huddle behind some, you know, desk and you'll go from Bible college to Bible college to Bible college to Bible college. And, you know, um, you know, Stephen Lawson, you know, who, you know, Stephen Lawson, uh, you know, he's truly become one of my favorites. He was tell he was talking about how one time he was um, uh, in seminary and he's preaching and his seminary professor is at the front center, front center, uh, um, first row. And while he's preaching, he's going on and on and on and on. And, um, all of a sudden, the professor holds up a sign that says, So what? <laughs> while he's preaching. <laughs> it's like, imagine that. Like, you know, and, and it was, at first he's thinking, like, Oh, you don't care what I'm saying? And what he realized, like, well, what's the implication of this? What is it? Okay, so you're preaching good, sound theology, but like, so what? Like, for what? Like, what? How is it going to apply? How How does it turn into go from head knowledge to like we walk this out in our daily lives? The foot knowledge, you know, the foot knowledge. That's right. right. Yeah, from head to foot. That's right. And uh, that's just awesome. So, so yeah. what? You know. Well, we're called to we're called to speak the truth in love, and. Uh, and make a sign for like they, they go hand in hand. hand. It's like, and this applies to in, inward as well. It's like you've got to have the truth and you've got to have love. It's got to be up here and in here. Mm-hmm. And if you're lacking one, mm-hmm. then it's just it's not good. Mm-hmm. Could be a lot better. Should and be and lot the better. humble route is that we all need to grow in both. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's that's the humble route is um, we all need. I, like I I've spent the last year and a half or so. Just taking all of my strongest theological convictions and reevaluating them. Um, why? Because it's good. It's good to do. You know, not because I'm, I'm starting to doubt some things. Not at all. But I, I'm reevaluating. Like, it, is what I believe true? You know. Um, and and I've grown. I've, I've uh, you know, I've grown in in my understanding of truth. And um, yeah, same with love. Like, this passage is a good one for that. You know, like. And grow in love. I, uh, in my in my notes, I wrote that uh, you were saying that Paul had a relationship with everyone that he he preached to, and it was a it was a a selfless relationship. It wasn't like I need this from from you, and I'll give you this in return. And, and that just made me think of like a clownfish. And a sea an enemy, the symbiotic relationship there. They both get good fruit out of their relationship together, hmm. and I don't know. That's just how I think. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's a good illustration. Switch. What's up? Which is which? Curiosity. So, uh, well, I don't know. I didn't think that far into it, but I guess while well, the sea an enemy provides protection for the clownfish, and the clownfish uh, cleans the sea an enemy. I don't. I don't know. You figure out where you want. Who you want to put this? <laughs> which uh, <laughs> was Paul a sin? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's true, and and that's yeah. all of creation pointing yeah. to the glory of God. Yeah. That's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, there's nothing wrong. It's it's, it's yeah. absolutely wonderful when we can take a, a piece of creation. And that that happens during war a lot. We see an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> there's the peanut gallery over there. I think I see a clownfish. <laughs> So it is 9.10, we can keep talking, um, but just know that uh, anyone obviously is free to go anytime. I love I love Hunter being like, if you don't mind, I'm out of here, say 57. I'm find your bathroom. He's just gone. <laughs> just the bathroom. Uh, we, yeah. we really are that free. Um, and uh, anyone else? Uh, we don't have to wrap it up. We can, or we can keep going. Any, but anyone have any thoughts? Anymore? Uh, let's see, last thoughts. I didn't say they have to be final thoughts. Not final. Matt, are you loving this? Yeah, I. it's different because I, I, the reason I, I haven't been going, I have, a, uh, I have a Bible study at my church, uh, Albany Baptist, closer to, it's like, Five-ish minutes away, and I, I've been. Oh, I know, that's right off of the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And um, we, we, do, we do Bible study, and we don't always ask uh, what, what we take away from this, but we, I, I'm usually not, not, saying, not saying they don't know theology. They, they do. They absolutely do. And we, we would disagree. Uh, some of them are, are free will Baptists, and me, see, <laughs> you, you know me. <laughs> yeah. Pull their opposite. Yeah, and we've talked. That's kind of, um, and there's ways I'm kind of a lone fish, you know. Yeah. Swimming this way, and everyone else swimming. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Yeah. So anyway, sorry. But no, no, you're fine. And I, I would, I would say something, and they, they got, uh, Tim, Tim Woodyard. He, he leads them, and he was I know saying. Tim. He's, he was a, he's retired OUP. Yep. I mm-hmm. love him. Yeah, he's oh, such a good guy. Yeah. Love him to death. Doing Send my love fun. to him. I will. Yeah. I will. Anyway, go ahead. And uh, he he said, since they know I'm Calvinistic, and they, they he said, in your view, it, regarding a specific specific test, I'm like, I want to say no, the view, but not my view. Not that champ. It's the correct view. But that, that's just let's move on. Right. I just happen to believe what's yeah. correct. It was it was uh, <laughs> it was actually Luke 15. We're studying Luke and. Ooh. And um, it was he was talking about the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, the two sons, and the prodigal, and and of course, I mean, I didn't say that, and then I, I later said, in and uh, and we have a men's breakfast for, for those those that didn't hear, we have a men's breakfast, and I, I spoke, I spoke on penal substitutionary atonement. When is that and men's breakfast? It is every second Saturday at nine o'clock. Cool. More than welcome to come by. Everybody. That's awesome. Every second Saturday at nine o'clock. Yep. That's awesome. Men's prayer breakfast is something is it, I want to uh, do with grace and truth. Yeah. What like what? So is it like this Saturday or the next Saturday? I, it was. So it was actually we did it last Saturday. So we're skipping that. We're skipping this okay. one. Next one. Okay. And so it's every other, not the second well, of every month. Yeah, and I, I I can also send the uh, yeah send yeah the that's a good too. question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. every other one, not the second of every. It's once a month yeah, or no, every other month. Well, it, it's yes. it's once a month. month. Once a uh, month. Okay. Um, yeah, that, is that makes sense. sense. Okay. First, I was thinking. Well, they might have switched it around for July. Month. Just yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 Usually, usually it's every second Saturday. But I was thinking so, yeah, like every other Saturday. So no, every second sense. Saturday, but uh, uh, check yeah, with the church is. just to make sure what you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I talked about and my dad picked it up. I I didn't even realize it. Uh, he said you were talking like it's it's the view. And it, we you're were, like, but it is. Yeah, and I was like, well, I mean, if, if you delved into this as much as I did, I mean, you, you would know. Because whenever I started, there, there came a point, as, as I said earlier, within the this, this Snapchat verse of the day where I realized, you know, I can teach people good morals, but I'm not really, I'm not teaching people Christianity because it's about Christ. Mm-hmm. And that, that's why I, I stopped and I'm like, okay. How is, how is a person safe? So then I go into soteriology, and what I come to find out is, is Calvinism, Arminianism, there was a point in, in Bible study there where I I was just like, I mean, my mind is blown of how how actually deep this goes. I don't I don't know where, where to start. So then I, I end up starting somewhere. By the grace of God, I come up with, with Calvinism. And, and um, then I, I studied really, really hard into soteriology, and then I when talking about penal substitution, as I said earlier, I, I said why we need a, a, a substitutionary atonement in the first place. Uh, it was I was teaching from Exodus where God is labeling out who he is to Moses, Yahweh, Yahweh, God, loving and compassionate, but he will he will by no means leave unpunished the, the uh, context or the guilty. I'm like, well, we're all guilty, so... <laughs> Who, who does he forgive? As he says, he forgives, and he righteously forgives. Well, how can God righteously forgive if he's just? And then yeah, so I, I explain why, and people said it went over their heads. I'm like, well, that kind of sucks, but I start talking about total depravity, and Dad was like, you know, you're talking like it's the view. And I'm like, I mean, Dad, if, if, if you knew me, if, if I had a Sunday to preach on, on what Calvinism is, and you went, you would understand why I believe this and intimately and why I, I want this to go out regardless of, of free will versus predestination and I'm like if, if you knew the state that we're actually in mm-hmm. you would embrace everything else and I, I, I even told him too I'm like hey if you can prove the T and tulip wrong you can prove everything wrong mm-hmm. but you can't prove the T and tulip wrong mm-hmm. 
because Paul makes it abundantly clear. And I wanted to say Paul's a Calvinist, but I'm <laughs> I was like, Woo, I, yeah, I had to tick I mean, off some people there. Knowing John Calvin, Calvin was a Paulist. Yeah. <laughs> knowing John Calvin, you might stray away from, from trying to make anyone like Paul like Calvin because Calvin's terrible. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, and, and that's worse. And, and if there's anywhere where his ideas go wrong, it's because he tried to put a legal idea onto the Bible, right? Where he's like, oh, I'm going to make an analogy. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say, God's the judge. I'm going to say, the devils are uh, uh, the, the uh, prosecutor. I'm going to say, Jesus is my defense. Well, where did he get that? Well, he didn't get it from the Bible. He got it from the surrounding culture because he was a lawyer. Look at there. Um, so he's making defense for himself uh, before God <laughs> by making his, his theology. So he has absolutely some good points. But I think, and, and this obviously goes into the whole debate of is it one or the other, but we're, a lot of people look at it with, with, with a, a either or and not a paradoxical both, right? Mm-hmm. Because we, we have other paradoxes in the Bible that I would argue is almost as God's fingerprint, right? Whether you look at quantum physics or you look at Jesus created his own mother, well, that's, that's a paradox, right? Well, in the same way, the... the the whole Arminianism versus Calvinism, ignoring some extraneouses, can be summarized in a paradoxical sense in, in one analogy of saying, which again, it's an analogy, just like the courtroom analogy is flawed, mm-hmm. so is this. On the outside of the door is whosoever will may come, right? Before Christianity, it's Arminianism. When you become a Christian, and you get on the inside of the door, and it says, many are called and few are chosen. So which is it? Well, it's not really both. But it's, it's not really neither either, right? We preach the gospel to everyone, whosoever will may come, but we know that many are called if you are chosen. Mm. And I think, and perhaps I'm oversimplifying, but I think that is, that is the most true to God's character because it, it doesn't try to cut off one or cut off the other in the, in the goal of making something more clean than it should be. Because here's the thing, God, God makes things that are beautiful that are not clean. They're clean in his sense, but not in our sense. Hmm. I don't think you're oversimplifying. I think you're overcomplicating. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. It's, it's, not a, it's not a matter of, um, to use your analogy, the, it's a difference between the calls. It's a difference between the general call, which goes out to all. Right. Um, so just to be clear, I'm also Calvinist. Um, <clears throat> the general call goes out to all. Um, and there is a true, genuine invitation for all. Um, all men, and there's a genuine responsibility to all men to receive the call, the general call of the gospel. Um, but as Matthew that's was saying, creation what's that? the creation leaves them without excuse, yes. Yeah, um, but the problem is total depravity. The, the problem is that no one in his natural state is able to save himself, is mm-hmm. able to choose righteousness given that his will is enslaved to his sin. So everyone receives the general call, but only those who receive the effectual call of the Holy Spirit. Only who those who receive the effectual call are in the, on the inside of the door. Right. The door exactly. of salvation. So to speak. Exactly. So, right. Yeah. No, you're describing my analogy. Which is Calvin. Calvinism. <laughs> <laughs> I despise John Calvin. But go on. Yes. How you much? Your name. <laughs> um, I don't care. <laughs> how much... Um, how much of Calvin himself have you read? Uh, no, I mean, I mean actually, of, actually of Calvin. Calvin. No, I haven't read a ton of Calvin. If if you read Calvin, I've gone I've like gone about, about Germany and, and seen different places and so on and so forth, but not read his stuff. Yes. If you if you read his work and saw his heart for the salvation of the lost and his heart for the growth of the church, you might change your mind. I mean, I don't I don't know all the details. You, you, you're speaking of things that I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do know some of the controversies with the Servius thing, for example. Yeah. Like I know the, that there are some. I know. I know the majority. Of the I, will, I will also say. And I know the position of Calvinists. I don't know. I don't there, know the there's, there's also a fruit thing that, that kind of has me at this point, right? I I've been to a lot of churches, mm-hmm. not necessarily by choice, but just because. Serpentine life path, right? And. I, any, and this is obviously paying a broad brush, any church 
that has said we're Calvinists on the top, there has been almost no fruit on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, Calvin himself right. now, just now, completely disagreed with that. Now, that, that may be the case, but the functional result is that there's no fruit because they're like, well, shoot, it's their fault anyway, they weren't called. I literally had a neighbor that in, in St. Marie, and that was like their whole theology was like, well, we don't need to do anything, we're all here. Well, that's the difference it's between like, that. You yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the difference between hyper. And that's not the first God time either. I, probably three so different churches. If, if you yeah. if you look through actually, Michigan, if, if you look through church history, um, the world missions, um, like the what we know is like world missions, sending missionaries out into the world to spread the gospel. Um, that goes as as recorded now, but yeah, yeah. Like what what we what we I mean, like right now there are tons and tons of missionary organizations that um, you know that that send people out. Um, if if you if you go back, um, and, and this goes back to seventeen hundreds, um, mid seventeen hundreds, it. It, it anyone of uh, any missionary organization will agree with this, whether they're Calvinist, whether Arminian or not, they will all agree um, that it all began from the preaching of Andrew Fuller, um, who was a uh, very staunch five point Calvinist, um, and his preaching awakening a heart for the lost in a man named William Carey. And William Carey um, started what we know as world missions, what we know of, today of as, world, as world missions. And, and, and historically, um, if, you, if you take, there's a lot of, right now there's a lot of little independent um, missions organizations that aren't rooted in anything his, historically, any, any you know, functionally. historical movements. But the ones that are rooted back into history, um, if you look at like a family tree, um, they, they all go back to the one point of um, Andrew Fuller's preaching. Um, and, you know, like this kind of, you know, it's, and it started with William Carey and it spread from there. But as, as it branches out, it, it, the, the closer and closer you get to, um, to that, to that um, beginning, um, you will see that all of the, like all of the most influential world's mission, world missions um, uh, uh, groups and movements um, were all rooted in um, the the doctrines uh, that that what what is called and uh, rightly and wrongly called Calvinism. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and so, I wouldn't say I'm a Calvinist. I would say I'm Calvinish. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't want to agree with everything that he, you know, teaches, but me neither. I'm, yeah. I, 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 I don't, in the sense, because um, I don't baptize infants, and I never will, unless well, I'm true. changed. But so I, think that's, I think that's a better way to put it. I'm not sure if anyone is really Calvinist completely. Mm -hmm. but well, there are. There's a lot of Calvinist yeah, people. Oh yeah, <laughs> there, are, there are people that. For, yeah. for example, for just for background on my my experience with. Calvinist. There's there's Calvin University in, in Michigan, and uh, did a lot of related associated for a lot of work. One of the biggest customers to the abortion clinic in Grand Rapids are the women that go to Calvin University. So, Not Grand Rapids, which is twenty thousand students. Calvin's Calvinic University. Here they have a big presence of <coughs> uh, pastors coming from Korea, or even want to be pastors. And they go to the United States, they find someone, whatever, get them pregnant, and send them to the, the clinic because they can't have the people back home finding out. And like, the statistics to back it up, because we're, you have the abortion clinic and you have the, I forget what they call it, it was basically a, a crisis pregnancy center, but yeah. they had some name for it. But they're, they're sitting there shocking the place, right? They, yeah. they had the statistics of who goes in, who, who doesn't come out, right? Yeah. And, wow. Well, that's like, that's tragic. But to, anyway, that's no, that's, that's no, that's totally tragic, and I don't deny that at all. But to be fair, 
I know what Calvinism is, right? No, and I right. can tell you, none of that comes from the fruit of. Well, and of, and of, that okay. goes back to what we were talking about earlier of people who have it all up here mm -hmm. and just not here. Mm -hmm. Then it's and like that's there's no Calvinism. Yeah, thing to yeah. this. Absolutely. What do you say? Well, yeah, hyper Calvinism. Yeah, yeah. And, and so so. To be fair. You know, I, I think there are major problems with Arminianism, but that is one of the major problems with um, not Calvinism, but with um, broad adaptation of, of, of an idea, right? Yeah, and, and just there, with, there, there's with a phrase us. for that <laughs> that the Catholics have, and it's it's really funny because and there's a phrase and it escapes me, but it's basically like if the lay people know, if we tell the lay people this, then terrible things happen. And that's a super elitist view, but it isn't wrong, right? If you tell tell the, the lay people, you know what, God's picked everybody. Well, God's picked everybody. We're all good then. Yeah. So I would tell everyone that, and I have. And so you asked if you But add, 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 add some commas, too, yes. <clears throat> add um, some commas? Oxford commas, because he, the sentence continues. Oh, the, the comma and? and? Well, sure, sure. Well, I mean, because I mean, in what you're talking about about evangelism, right? Just right. saying how, how Jesus died for everybody. I mean, J Jesus did by by technicality. He did, and the reason I say by technicality is because I mean I, I'm I'm a big definite atonement guy. I'm, I'm not going to say limited, as that's my main issue with with people at, at my church that that don't like Calvinism. They look they look at tulip and yeah, they just cool. they utterly despise. What is, like this, what is this tulip thing? Yeah, but it's a by the it's of Calvin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's totally which, by the way, which by the way was not created by Calvin or right. Calvin is another Yeah, I'll look it up. Tulip yeah. is the acronym. Sure. Okay. Yeah, got it. And I'm I'm like the, you you're you're right. I that Calvinism if if we're just to go by by the acronym, right. yeah, yeah, not, not even explain it. I would I don't there's, believe there's that. the bad parts of John Calvin, there's John Calvin. Then there's the bad parts of whatever was stacked on top of John Calvin mm -hmm. and it might be part of the acronym too. Right. Well yeah, and <clears throat> And we like to make neat 